So the biggest one I would say that comes up question that probably emerges around these dimensions in my community has to do with, well, probably the first one has to do with, do I stay or do I go? So um, this is when people feel like they can't decide if they should stay with someone because is it just that I, is, is this an expectation I have of them that's unrealistic and I'm just being too needy or I'm being too dismissive and I'm being too avoidant or I'm being too anxious. And so um, how do I gauge whether this feeling I'm having, which we might describe as a boundary response or experience, is enough to decide that I should or should not remain in this relationship, right? So let's say jealousy is one of those feeling dimensions that may be pointing you towards incompatibilities or let's say um, contrasts in your value, in the experience of your values and your priorities with this person, right? And um, I also, I don't talk about this as openly or broadly, but I'm also a certified uh, Reiki practitioner. So Reiki is a form of energy healing. And in my training, I became very familiar with the chakra system. Um, and the chakra system is, is actually derived from tantric yogic tradition. It's thousands of years old. Um, but what I, um, what I like to do is I like to, whenever a question like that arises, we, we usually look out into the world and we ask people, what do you think? You know, what, what are these, the assessment scales that I can find that will tell me if I should stay or go or things like that? Um, but I would actually recommend that you check in with yourself first. You check in with your energy and you check in with what your body is telling you about this person. Um, and I like to use the framework of the chakras to help me make decisions like that. So I may just walk you through this. Um, there's seven main chakras of the body and those are energy centers or vortices. They are tied to spindles of nerves in your spine. They are associated with spindles of nerves in your spine. So let's say, do I stay or do I go? Do I stay with this person? Do I not stay with this person? So first I would have you access your crown, right? You, just, you can do this with me if you want. And just like tap your crown. It's an energy center in your body. Oh, it also happens to be a tapping point if you're someone who likes emotional freedom technique. So we can activate our crown a little bit. This is where you access your higher knowing uh, the divine self, if you will, and ask yourself, does this person contribute to my sense of purpose? Does this person contribute to my sense of purpose? That might lead you down the road of what is my purpose? <laughs> what is my sense of purpose? Good place to start, right? But do they, do they contribute to your sense of purpose? Then moving down into the third eye, I've talked a little bit about this before, but this is like, this is really about wisdom, foresight, perception, um, the shadow side of it is that you, limiting beliefs, right? You, that nine times out of 10, you think this thing's going to happen. And so you shut yourself off to any possibility of something going a different way. That's what happens when we slip into the shadow aspect of it. That's limiting beliefs. But the lighted aspect of it would be wisdom, right? Being able to apply wisdom flexibly, let's say. So do you see yourself as happy with this person in the future? And actually, we have some tapping points right here. Right. Do you see yourself as happy with this person in the future? Can you see yourself now? Don't say, well, if they did this, that and the other thing and they access their potential, then I could see myself as happy with them in the future. Let's just stick with the present moment as they are expressing themselves and showing up to you right now. Do you see yourself as happy with them in the future? Yes or no. OK, um, then we go to the throat right? Do you, do you feel safe speaking your mind? Do you feel safe speaking your mind? The throat is about allowing what's inside of you to come out. And when we tell half truths or lies, or we obscure something about ourselves because we think someone's not going to like it, or we're afraid that that will lead to a negative outcome, your throat closes up, it becomes constricted, right? So do you feel safe speaking your mind? In the heart, are they generous of spirit? Are they generous of spirit? Are they someone who likes, who is willing to share their time and resources without some kind of recompense? This is sort of like the no good deed goes unpunished, right? Are they generous or is everything a tit for tat? Do they measure every time they pay for dinner? Um, do they, are they keeping track of every exchange of affection or attention or, you know, acts of service? Or is it just something that emerges from them because they want to do it for you because they take pleasure in sharing with you, not because they're expecting something in return. 
Are they generous of spirit? Okay. In your abdomen, do you have similar long-term goals? The abdomen is all about ego identity, but it's about how you how you are productive, how you express yourself in the world of form, um, how you how your works are made manifest in the world, and do you, so do you have similar long-term goals? Um, in the sacral, sacral is about emotion, um, ambiguity, abstraction, duality, chords, connect chords that connect to you. It's about creativity, potentiation, okay? So this is where we start to really understand our values and make discerning judgments about things. Not moral, not necessarily moral judgments, but discerning judgments. We slip into moral judgments when the sacral is not um, balanced or harmonious, let's say, and we, we slip into splits. If you wanna learn more about that, you can check out my um, Compassionate Communication uh, training. It should be uh, on my YouTube channel and or in the units of our Facebook group. Um, but we talked, or on IGTV, but we talked about how in the sacral, we can slip into moral judgments. And that's when we start experiencing things in the extreme, black or white, in or out. You're for me, you're against me, right? Okay. There's an, we don't understand or know how to hold ambiguity or dualities. Okay. And that speaks to how we make value judgments as opposed to moral judgments. So do you have similar values? Right. And lastly, the root, which is in the area of the genital region, the perianum, can they communicate about sex? Can they commun about, communicate about sex with you? And this also speaks to how comfortable you reside in your body. How connected are you to your body? What is the nature of that connection? Right. Because these are these are going to be tied together. What's the nature of that connection? So, for example, on my channel, sometimes we do activities that are about body activation and then we express ourselves through art making or guided visualization, something like that. I might ask you, so if, if I might ask you, OK, so you've experienced jealousy recently. When I ask you, where does the jealousy live in your body? Like if you were to imagine your body as the landscape for your emotional life, where would the jealousy land in your body now? You might even just type that in the chat box there if you happen to know. Where does jealousy land in your body? Now, you might be someone who knows right away. Jealousy is right here, right? Or jealousy is in my gut, or I feel jealousy in my hands, or I feel jealousy in my legs and it makes me want to run, like that kind of thing. Or you might be someone who says, I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. How, what, what does that even mean, right? I don't feel connected to my body. I feel like my energy is floating above my head all day. So so this is this is where... Um, the root can help ground us into the body because the body actually has a tremendous amount of resources to share with you. Now, some people might say, I don't know, because anytime I drop into my body, I get overwhelmed. So I avoid my body. I'm aware of it, but it's terrifying. So I don't go there. Okay. Um, so, so that means there's another type of approach that we want to assume because that means that they have a rather narrow, what's called window of tolerance. It means there's likely to be some experience of trauma in that person's uh, life and their energy may be bottlenecked or choked off right here. Right. Um, so, so the way we approach something like that is we find out the safest place to start. That might be in the top because if you've dissociated, you're not able to connect to your body either because you don't know how it feels like it's foreign to you or you're afraid of it. We might start up here because it's safer and then slowly touch upon the body until we're able to create um, a construct for how to access it. Now, some people feel like they're living down here, right? This They get this. They're very expressive. They're very organic. They're very, you know, they, they just feel their way through life. But sometimes that gets overwhelming. So in that case, we might start with the expressive part of the body, but we're going to start climbing up a little bit and opening this up a little so we can access some of that mindfulness, some of that conscientiousness, some spaciousness around the feelings of the, the affect of the body so that this doesn't feel so like like this. You know, this doesn't feel so uncontrollable, right? Off the rails. Um, so I wanted to offer this as kind of like a little framework Coming back to the original question, do I stay or do I go, right? Um, how do I discern if this is something that is good or bad for me? How do I discern if what the jealousy is, what the je jealousy is telling me? So it, we might bring this back to our original topic. If you're feeling jealous, it's likely that some need in and along the, the dimensions that we just explored isn't quite being met, or it's afraid of losing its equilibrium, right? 
And um, if you if you realize that it's actually envy that you're experiencing, same thing. What is what is one of these things? What if one what is what one dimension of your life, or it could be multiple dimensions of your life, needs to be addressed first in order for you to understand why that envy is coming up. 